Hello and welcome along to Mondo Chalavet Movies, my name is John and this video is going to be a closer look through shelf 2 which is over there but first I've got an unboxing for you So I just got a package here from Dave Ramsden to show you that that's a great uh, thing to put on there a pick with a guitar on fire so I know what's in here and Dave was speaking to me the other day and he says look I've got these things for you you remember that Dave sent me that box of amazing slipcovers and those two great Blu-rays well Blu-ray Blu and a 4k so I'll leave a link down to that down below if you haven't seen it before Dave has sent me plastic cases that's uh, honestly when you get these which I'll show you in a minute you put these now I've never I've seen people showing them and I've seen people having them on their steel books in, in particular and when you look at it you think oh that they look really nice and you don't realize how good they are when you put the protective covers on them you put the blu-ray in there or your your, your 4k or whatever steel book form for me but I'll show you what they're like I'll come back and I'll show you what they look like in these boxes but once again thanks Dave and Jill and I'll show you what steel books I've put them on First up, Devil's Double. What a steel book this is. This this uh, and the lenticular slip for this is absolutely amazing. But looks absolutely brilliant. I just love the way that these are just fully covered. Never really had these before, as I've spoke before, but this is just amazing to have this fully protected. So that's Devil's Double. Speaking of fully protected, here's Jaws. Now if you can see, there is there is some damage on that one. I mean, that was done. It wasn't damaged when I got it, but this has actually happened in the process of the being on the shelves. I think this is the only one that's damaged, unfortunately. Great steel book. I love the steel book. I do have it on 4K. I don't have to have the steel book, but the, the fact that this just looks that good would be great to actually put up in a, in a sort of frame somewhere. But it, I just love it that much. But it just shows you these things are easily damaged, and I didn't do anything underward, what I, what I feel. But obviously it's it's nicked it somehow. But that's not going to get any worse. So that's Jaws. Next up is the Hindenburg. I have took the J cards off all of these uh, these steel books. I just think they look better because you can see all all the stuff in them and the protected. I keep I do keep the J cards, but I keep them in the cupboard somewhere. This is the HMV exclusive. It's got this Japanese writing on for some reason. And uh, I just I love this film. If you haven't seen this film, you've got to see it. The picture quality on this on this Blu-ray I find is absolutely amazing. I, I love this the whole saga of this story, and I do and I do like to watch loads of videos about the Hindenburg. I'm just quite fascinated by the whole the whole thing. So that's the Hindenburg, beautiful steel book. Next up is Mermaid. This is a great movie. It's made by the director Stephen Chow, who made Kung Fu Hustle and um, Shaolin Soccer. It's just brilliant. If you like, if you like those movies, you'll love this one. This is more like a fantasy movie, but it's it's amazing. I got this steel book. I think it was about three quid in HIV in the sale. Picture quality is absolutely brilliant on it, and obviously some of the special effects that Stephen Chow employs are absolutely amazing. So that's Mermaid. And last up, and this is a spoiler alert for a forthcoming John Hall video, is Fright Night 4K Steelbook. Now, the best thing about this is that this steelbook is damaged, and it's not the easiest to handle. But when it's in its case, you would literally not know where the damage is. Now, the damage is up here. Obviously, I'll go into it, and you can see how it's, it's kind of come away there. Actually, when John Hall picked it up, when he got it, this was crushed. This whole thing was, was really flat, and I mean flat. So I've worked on it, and I've managed to get it out a bit. I think I've I've knocked it out a, a, a touch, but not too much, mind. But the best thing about this is, when I've got it in here, it's actually, it's quite, when you handle it, especially there, it does kind of click a bit, and I don't really want it to get, like, to break. And in here, this is protecting this, so it's it's going to completely stay the way it is. I mean, it's a shame that that's happened, and John Hall obviously got a replacement for it. But uh, this is on a forthcoming video from John Hall, which I'll get, I think there's two videos out. We'll get them out very soon. Lovely steel book, that. So once again, I want to thank Dave and Jill for sending these across to me. And uh, right, let's take a look at Shelf 2.
So at the top of the shelves you've got your 4Ks. Now these are the 4K Special Editions. Uh, I like to put these on the top. I think they'll be better on there. Plus they're a little bit bigger than the gaps I've got in some of the other shelves. So I take a slow pan across there. So amazing stuff getting released on 4K these days for these uh, obscure sometimes horror titles that you think, wow, I can't believe that this has got an actual 4K release. Absolutely brilliant to have all those things together on the shelves. Never thought I'd see the day that that would happen. So the 4K is going of a better order now, you know, mainly with some exceptions. And I try to keep these, the massive uh, special editions, mainly on the top with 4Ks. Sometimes they go on the bottom of the shelves just because I don't want to put too much weight on the top or they'll just come away from the wall. Like they did on shelf one. So down to the next shelf, some of the 4Ks. Some great stuff coming out in 4Ks, as I've said. I'm just so pleased to get some of these ones in 4K. Ones that I never thought would ever see the light of day. And actually ones that look exceptional. It's just a great time to have uh, that sort of uh, format. So most of the 4Ks on here, I do try and pick up in sales. I think it, well, it helps out. You can get more for your, your dollar, can't you? If you try to be a bit shrewd with your, your purchases. I think if you've got all these on day of release, like a full price, I think the, the price of them would be astronomical. But these days, 4K second hand, you can get them quite cheap. And I think it's much better than it was when it first came out. Down to shelf three. For me, the best thing about these shelves is to have everything out in plain sight. You can just help yourself to what you want. It's straight in front of your face. And to be honest, there's a few titles in here. If they were in a, like a cupboard somewhere, I just literally wouldn't wouldn't remember them. It's just nice to have them on view. And I think when they're on view, for me, myself personally, I just like the thought of walking around and spotting the odd one. And I think, oh, I forgot about that one. Or I'll, I'll get that one checked out. It's just, uh, for me, I like the convenience of it all. So I'm coming up towards the end of me slip covers, me, me 4Ks with slip covers on, and these are the ones of 4Ks without slip covers on. But as you know, I'm going to sort all them out. Well, that's great. And then I'm going to go now into my horror section after this. This is shelf four on shelves two. Now what I did was, these all used to be on the other shelves, but I thought it's kind of just the way it's worked out that this shelf now seems to be full of 4Ks and horror. That seems to be the way that this is going. I've got some space as well in this shelf, which is great. So I can still uh, keep adding to the collection. And it's, it's great to have this. I think it's great to have, personally think, to have all a certain genre in one place. And you're not kind of looking around for things. And it gets lost a bit on shelves if you don't know exactly know where they are. Or roughly where they are. And I do roughly know that these horror if I want a horror title, they're always on this shelf. So that's great. Down to shelf five. Most of these releases in the horror section are from the UK. Most of them. But what I'm going to do is, as you'll see a little bit later on, I've got some U US titles. I've got quite a lot of them. And I want to do something with them. Obviously, they're a bit messed up at the minute. Well, they're not messed up, but they're not in exactly the order I want them in. I will do that in the future. The best thing about these shelves is you can just do whatever you want, whenever you want. You can take a chunk out and you can put it on the other shelves, or you can take a block out and put it down on another shelf. It's all so interchangeable, which is brilliant. So after these ones here, which is like the Sharknado stuff, which is like the kind of strange, daft horror films, really low-budget ones that are like, wow, I've got from Phantasm, you're probably talking more of the the US stuff and stuff like that, video nasties. And I'm going to move them around a little bit because they're not exactly in any order at this point. But I will put them into a bit of a better order uh, when I get when I get uh, when I get time. Got some great releases from across the pond. So shelf seven is hammer stuff. Keep all the Hammer stuff together, even though some of them are from a different company. I will put all the Hammer stuff in one place. Great collection. I know I'm not completed yet, but it's they're getting easier to find these movies. Just absolutely brilliant. Hammer's just whatever. If you haven't checked out Hammer, go and check out the Hammer films. 
you'll love them if you love gothic horror. Next is Umbrella. I've got all the Umbrella section, the titles together. And then the next one to that is I've got the um, Screenbound, I think they're called Screenbound, and the Shameless ones as well. And then coming up to more US titles and stuff from around the world, like uh, Germany and stuff like that, they need to be sorted out, like I say, and put it into a proper, proper section. I think I've got a couple of UK ones that need to go elsewhere. Then you get a couple of Second Sight special editions, uh, amazing special editions, more from them further down in this uh, video. Getting towards the, the Grindhouse releasing, brilliant titles, and the, the Universal Horror ones, absolutely can't recommend that. A bit like Hammer, I can't recommend them them high enough. They're just such fun. I had a lot of time growing up with them when I was a kid. So shelf eight is vacant at this time. Plenty of space there, which is always good to see. Shelf nine is Criterion. Now, people who love Criterion will notice these are not in any order. And I've done that because I just put them in the order that I like them in with uh, directors silent movies that type of thing i don't put them in with the actual spine numbers so apologize for that if anybody finds that offensive i know that uh, I, I sometimes i think i would but the, i don't want to have i want to have all the big ones together just for uniformity that's the name of the game for me as you know then i go into the bfi titles some amazing stuff on bfi hope the glare's not getting to you here that's from the window over there Got some brilliant titles on the BFI range. And after the BFI titles, you've got the Eureka titles. These are the ones with slipcovers. Absolutely brilliant range. This company is amazing. Got some slip, uh, steel books there as well. And then you've got some regular titles. All the ones, I think I've seen practically all of these ones. With only a few that I've got to check out. Just love this range. Everyone I've got of them I've rate highly. You know you're getting a fantastic a bit like Criterion, you know you're gonna get a fantastic version of that movie. Nelly on the floor starts the arrow collection. That's just me just shimming along the floor. I'll keep all the ones with slipcovers together. Arrow do some brilliant slipcovers, do some brilliant movies. And I go from maybe the older Arrow releases, Arrow titles, to the newer ones. And some great, great versions of new viewer films, and there's some, uh, some martial art ones there. And then into the, the regular ones. These are some very early Arrow ones. This is when they first come out, around about 2010, I think. Some great versions of these movies. I don't know if some of these might not be in, in print anymore. And then I go through to the likes of the Giallo stuff, Italian stuff. I would do some amazing movies of these, versions of these uh, Italian stuff. Then I go across to the, like, the sort of uh, American, the early American stuff. I'm going to see Roger Corman. Some brilliant uh, 60s stuff there, 50s and 60s stuff and early 70s. Got some great titles in their collection. Shelf 10, Herschel Gordon Lewis collection there. Brilliant. Check him out. What a director. Done some of the best exploitation movies you'll ever see. Some good uh, um, video nasties in there. This is getting them all. I, I, I put them out to try and get them into going through like years ish. And they'll come like more newer. As they get progress along this this um, this shelf, there's some of the Japanese movies that they have. Some brilliant stuff there. Yakuza movies as well. Martial arts. And there's some uh, like later Japanese movies as well. Big fan of Japanese uh, cinema. There's some Arrow Academy ones. 
The Arrow Academy ones, when I run out of space, they go onto a shelf. They go onto shelf one. And here's some of the Blu-ray special editions from Arrow. I've got the 4K of some of them, but I think they're that good. I don't want to get rid of them. I think they're just just amazing. And some of them are very similar to the other ones, and some of them are quite different. And here we are on the floor with shelf 11. This is where I put the big heavy box sets. Because the weight of them, they look great on the top shelf, but I tell you what, the, the weight of them just actually peels them off the wall. So don't ever, if you've got these shelves, don't put your big heavy stuff at the top because the shelves just can't take it after a while. Second sight movies there, a few 4Ks. The amazing Ip Man Legacy Collection. Here is the equally amazing Arrow Show Scope. That's volume one. And there's volume two. They take up a lot of space, but I just love to show them like that. I mean, you couldn't show them any other way for the shelves, for these shelves anyway. And towards the end of shelf 11 and the end of these shelves is the Arrow Big Boxes. These are massively heavy. It's a shame to put them on the floor, but I don't want to have them falling off the wall. That would be horrendous. And for me, I couldn't have a better view when you get up in the morning. I don't know if the Debs shares that sentiment, though. So sometime this summer, we'll be finishing off this room, completely painting it. And then I'll do a complete swoop of this room. Although you've pretty much seen everything there is, apart from what's over there, which is just a cupboard, if you're interested. So, thanks for watching. You take care. And I will see you on the next video. Cheers.